<laughs> Another one. Man, early season walleyes, it's all about shaking it hard in their face. They're still tuned up from fall and you literally, you want to increase your jig cadence as they come into you. And you almost can't even jig it hard enough. Another one on the flutter swim. I literally am not even using bait right now because you don't need to. Um, I had plenty of fish to steal minnows in, the, in my day and uh, just drop right back down to them. And they'll just chow without bait. So now there's jigs that are dressed with feathers on them. And honestly, I've caught my last seven fish without a minnow head. So it's all about working it hard in their face. Coming into the magic hour, the big ones are starting to bite. This one literally did it just like every single fish today. It came in about a foot off the bottom. As it came in, I increased my jig sequence. I literally increased my cadence and made a chase. It's like a doing a figure eight for a muskie. So I make a chase up to about five feet off the bottom and uh, every single one of them is just smoked. All right, here's the move. I got one coming in. So this one doesn't want to do it, but I'm not going to take it away that far. I just want to keep that rhythm going that made it come in, kind of flutter it away from a few times, try to get it to really lock on. I feel like when they get a visual of it, that's when they lock on and really start coming at your lure. So until then, you know, I want to still be doing things that are making vibration in the water for that fish to be able to find my bait. Here she comes, chasing up, I'm four or five feet off. Oh, just nipped it. Okay, I'm going to do it. Watch this, this one will come back. So I'm right back down on top of the mark, hard, 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 hard. Here it comes, it turned around, coming right back, even harder this time. Oh, man. So I like to jig just in that like um, two to three foot off range and just fluttering my jig through the water column as I'm shaking it hard the whole time. So that's really enacting the rattle on a rattling bait, like a rattling blade spoon. But you wanna be just calling that fish in. So um, as you're doing that, you know, just a constant vibration down there. That's what's going to enable that fish to track you on this big mud flat and come right over to your sonar. As far as walleye rods, there's really only one in my mind. It's uh, the Thorn Brothers Walleye Sweetheart. This is a 36 incher. Um, I use it in the house. I use it outside. It's the perfect length for me. Um, I suggest people this. Extend your rod links out. You'll get way more advantage. Same advantages that you have in the summertime. So this one's a 36 incher medium action walleye sweetheart with recoil guides and a Syncor candle. The thing about sensitivity in a rod, all it has to do with is how light it is. So this is absolutely the lightest walleye rod you can buy and therefore it's the most sensitive. Here's the business end of this. I use 10 pound nanofill basically because it retracts water. So I do 10 pound nanofill to a really small barrel swivel and then I do eight pound Berkeley fluorocarbon the rest of the way. Another nice one, the flutter spoon. Again, same exact thing, it works every time. Fish comes in, increase my cadence, start taking it away, they chase it, I let them catch up to it, and right at the end, I'm still just pounding it right in their face, and the bites are just, they just drop your rod tip like three inches, it's awesome. See ya. One of the best things about the FLX28 is the bottom zoom. Um, being able to zoom in on the bottom six feet of the water column, especially when you're walleye fishing, it's imperative to be able to see the mood of that fish and to instantly make adjustments in your jig cadence by if that fish is changing posture. So walleyes actually come up to your jig and they inspect it and if they deny you, they're actually swimming away from your jig. So one of the best moves that I know of, if I get denied initially when that fish comes in, I like to lower my jig right down to the same level as that mark as it's depleting away and I actually increase my cadence and thump it even harder. It's like a comeback call. And when that fish turns around, the second that I see that mark start widening again or brightening, I instantly go back into the takeaway move. I increase my cadence and I take it away and make that fish chase, you know, four or five feet off the bottom. And a lot of times it's like it's never seen a lure before and it comes back even harder, lines up your jig and just smokes it. So one of the key things is right as that mark first comes in on the bottom, when I first see it on the bottom zoom, I want to increase my cadence and start taking it away off the bottom. So that's like your first impression. Same thing with a figure eight on a muskie. Um, when they come in and they're tracking your bait, you know, from the vibration, when they first get a visual, you want your bait to be like a minnow that's starting to get nervous and starting to get away. So I start climbing the ladder instantly and forcing the issue, trying to create that aggressiveness out of the fish. <laughs> nice. Not a big one. Still fell for the exact same move. It's like 
last light right now. The thing still hunted it down. Bit about five feet off the bottom. The smaller fish. But I think the lesson is for early ice walleyes is you cannot jig too aggressive. 